In July, ZTE announced a brand new brand known as the Axon. This is going to be their global brand going forward. They announced the Axon Pro for the US as well as other variants for Asia and Europe. We finally got our hands on the Axon Pro which was announced back in July and here is our full review of ZTE's first high-end smartphone built for the US. The Axon Pro has three physical buttons here. There's the power button and dedicated camera button on the right side, with the volume rocker on the left. ZT made sure that these four are in the right spot for everyone, and they actually are, as I can reach them without needing to shimmy my hand up the device. So nice work ZTE. Inside the Axon Pro, we have the Snapdragon 810 and 4 gigs of RAM. Through the two weeks that I've been using the Axon Pro, I haven't noticed the phone getting really hot. Of course it is the Snapdragon 810 and the Axon Pro is an aluminum phone. Speaking of aluminum, the Axon Pro is all aluminum, however it is not slippery at all unlike the HTC One M8 and M9. One of the key features that ZT touted with the Axon was its audio. ZT partnered up with GBO and Dolby here to bring us hi-fi audio. Now while it's difficult to demonstrate this on video considering you need to use headphones, you have to take my word for it, it's pretty amazing. There is also a built-in Dolby app which allows you to adjust the system-wide EQ depending on whether you're listening to music, watching a movie, or whatever you might be doing with audio on the device. ZT also included a pair of JBL earbuds which are about 50 bucks so you've got that included for the $450 price tag. Not bad. Software wise, ZT didn't do too much here, giving us an almost stock-like experience. They did change a few things with the most noticeable ones being the quick settings and app drawer. The quick settings work pretty similar to stock Android. However, when you swipe down once, it reveals the top row of toggles as well as the brightness slider. Swipe down again and you have access to everything. This is also very customizable. I actually like how ZT has changed the quick settings here on the Axon Pro, making it easier to get to Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and a couple other quick settings that you may use a lot more often. The app drawer is almost completely stock, however there are two changes here. We have a transparent background instead of a white card interface which Google uses on the Google Now Launcher. It also loops, so when you get to the last page of apps in your app drawer, instead of stopping, it goes back to the beginning and keeps looping. Not bad changes if you ask me. Now onto the camera. I really was not impressed here to be honest. There was one big quirk here that was a bit surprising to me. In low light, if I don't have HDR turned on, it will not take a picture. Now it will make the shutter sound like it's make taking a picture, but if you go into the gallery, there's no picture. The issue with having HDR on, especially at night and in low light conditions, is it takes longer to take the photo. And in my testing I found out that it becomes more blurry, so it doesn't look all that good. Other than that, the camera took okay pictures. It's a 13 megapixel sensor with a 2 megapixel uh, dual camera sensor. So it's kind of like HTC's one M8 camera, but it's got the higher megapixel count so it doesn't break down when you zoom in. In daylight and other well lit conditions, it took pretty nice pictures, which you can see in the video right now. This year, ZT came out strong with the ZT Axon Pro. This is their first true flagship for the US that is a high-end device. And for the most part, I was pretty impressed. However, the battery life left something to be desired. As you can see, I could barely get past 3.5 hours of on-screen time. That was even with being on Wi-Fi the entire day. So it's not going to win any wars in that respect of. Other than that, I really like the phone and excited for the next iteration, which is due to come out next year. As always, if you like this video, be sure to like and comment. Also subscribe if you haven't already, and you can find us over on AndroidHeadlines.com for loads more Android content. Until next time.